If you walked into the Max Planck Institute in Germany and saw this machine, you wouldn't think it was a power plant. You'd think it was a mistake. It looks like a crushed soda can or a ribbon tangled by a giant. For 50 years, physicists called this design the Stellarator. And for 50 years, they mostly ignored it. They called it too complex. They said it was impossible to build. They said it was a technological dead end. But while the rest of the world poured billions into cleaner, simpler looking designs, a team in Germany spent two decades quietly perfecting this ugly duckling. And recently, that dedication paid off in a way that has shattered the skepticism of the entire scientific community. They didn't just turn it on, they held a superheated 100 million degree plasma stable for eight minutes, not milliseconds, minutes. This breakthrough changes the timeline of human history. It suggests that the impossible machine might actually be the only one that works. Today, we are going deep into the engineering marvel of the Wendelstein 7X, why it beats the competition and the new company that plans to put this star power into the grid by the 2030s. To understand why this German machine is such a big deal, we have to look at the holy grail it's chasing. Nuclear fusion, it is the same process that powers our sun. You take two light atomic nuclei, usually hydrogen isotopes like deuterium and tritium, and smash them together. They fuse, create helium, and release a neutron, carrying a massive amount of energy. The benefits are staggering. No carbon emissions, no risk of a meltdown like Chernobyl, no long-lived radioactive waste, and the fuel? You can get it from seawater. A bathtub of water could theoretically provide as much energy as huge piles of coal. But doing this on Earth is a nightmare. To force those atoms to fuse, you have to strip their electrons, creating a state of matter called plasma. And you have to heat that plasma to 100 million degrees Celsius, seven times hotter than the center of the sun. There is no material in the universe that can hold something that hot. If the plasma touches the walls of the reactor, it melts the machine, and worse, the plasma instantly cools down and the fire goes out. So, you have to build a magnetic bottle. You use powerful magnetic fields to levitate the plasma in a vacuum, keeping it trapped in mid-air, away from the walls. And for the last half century, we've been building that bottle in the shape of a donut. The standard design is called the tokamak. If you've heard of ITER in France, that's a tokamak. It's a symmetrical donut-shaped chamber. To keep the plasma trapped, the magnetic field lines need to twist around the donut like stripes on a candy cane. If they don't twist, the plasma drifts outward and crashes. Here is the tokamak's fatal flaw. To get that twist, the tokamak drives a massive electrical current through the plasma itself. The gate plasma acts like a wire, but plasma is not a copper wire. It is a turbulent, fluid-like storm. If that current gets interrupted, even for a split second, the magnetic cage snaps. This is called a disruption. The plasma crashes into the wall like a bolt of lightning. It can bend steel and melt components. This makes tokamaks inherently prone to instability. They are pulsed machines, struggling to run continuously without these violent crashes. This is where the Stellarator comes in. Invented in the 1950s by Lyman Spitzer, the Stellarator solves the problem by removing the current from the plasma entirely. Instead of using the plasma to create the twist, the Stellarator twists the machine itself. The magnets are shaped in complex 3D curves. They force the magnetic field to twist from the outside. This means the plasma is naturally stable. It is in a state of equilibrium. You can turn it on and theoretically leave it on forever. No disruptions, no crashes. So why aren't all reactors built this way? Because designing those magnets is a mathematical nightmare. 
In the 20th century, we simply didn't have the supercomputers capable of calculating the precise 3D shapes needed to contain the plasma perfectly. But by the 1990s, computers finally caught up to the physics, and Germany decided to build the ultimate proof. The construction of the Wendelstein 7X was an engineering saga. It consists of 50 non-planar superconducting coils each weighing six tons. They had to be positioned with a precision of less than a millimeter. If one magnet was slightly off, the field would leak, and the billion euro machine would be worthless. It took 1.1 million hours of assembly time. But when they turned it on, it worked. The recent campaign was the true test. They weren't just trying to make plasma. They were trying to sustain it. By using active water cooling on the diverter, the part of the machine that exhausts the heat and impurities, they managed to run high-performance plasma for eight minutes. Why does eight minutes matter? Why not eight hours? Because eight minutes is long enough to reach thermal equilibrium. That means the walls of the machine have heated up as much as they are going to. If you can survive eight minutes without melting, you can survive indefinitely, while tokamaks are like sprinters, powerful but prone to tripping. The Wendelstein 7X proved it is a marathon runner. It turned over 1.3 gigajoules of energy. It proved that the Stellarator concept isn't just theory anymore. It is a viable blueprint for a commercial power plant. Academic research is great, but it doesn't power your toaster. To do that, you need a commercial product. Recognizing the success of W7X, a team of scientists from the Max Planck Institute spun out a new company, Proxima Fusion. They are the first spin-off from this institute, and their goal is audacious. To build the world's first fusion power plant based on the Stellarator, they call their reactor design Stellaris and they have an advantage the W7X designers didn't have. AI and modern magnets. W7X was designed with 90 supercomputers. Proxima uses modern AI to simulate millions of magnet configurations, finding shapes that are easier to manufacture and more efficient at trapping heat. They are also using high-temperature superconductors, HTS. These are new tapes that can create much stronger magnetic fields than the old copper or niobium coils. Stronger magnets mean you can squeeze the plasma tighter. Tighter plasma means you can make the reactor smaller. While W7X is a massive research beast, Stellaris aims to be a compact modular machine that can be manufactured in factories and shipped to the site. They plan to have a demonstration plant running in the 2030s. The timing couldn't be more critical. The world is hungry for energy. AI data centers, electric vehicles, and industrial manufacturing are driving electricity demand through the roof. Solar and wind are essential, but they are intermittent. We need baseload power to fill the gaps when the sun sets and the wind dies. Currently, we burn gas and coal for that. Stellarators offer the perfect solution. Steady, boring, continuous clean energy. But it's not just electricity. Proxima emphasizes that fusion provides high-grade industrial heat. This heat is crucial for decarbonizing things like chemical production and steel manufacturing, sectors that solar panels simply can't help with. We are witnessing a shift. Fusion is moving from the era of science experiments into the era of industrial engineering. The physics is no longer the bottleneck. The bottleneck is now just how fast we can build the magnets. Germany's twisted monster was once laughed at. Now it is leading the pack. The eight-minute miracle at Wendelstein 70X has proven that we can tame the stars. The path to unlimited energy is no longer a straight line. It's a twisted loop, and for the first time in history, we can see the finish line. 
Do you think the complexity of the Stellarator is worth the stability? Or will the simpler Tokamak win in the end? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.